Hey, folks, this is the show where we teach you how to naturally get well and stay well. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Thanks for tuning in. Do appreciate you taking time out of your day. And I was in a grocery store the other day, and I, somebody recognized me. It's always fun because nobody knows what I look like, unless you go to my website, of course. But when I speak, it was, oh, I know that voice. And so I was there, and somebody spun around, and I said, oh, my gosh, you're Dr. Joe. And I said, yeah, and oh, my God, I love your shows. I've read your books. I'm a big fan. And I said, that's great. And they said, I see you're picking out organ. I was picking out organic vegetables, and they said, "Yeah." And they said, "Does it really make a difference?" You know, I mean, they they look the same. You know, chard is chard, or whatever. Romaine lettuce is romaine lettuce. Does it really make a difference? And I thought it's probably time I, I I've talked about this in bits and pieces. It's time I really visited this thing hardcore. So if you find yourself eyeing up the organic label, you wonder if it's worth it. According to a review published in the British Met Journal of Nutrition. Uh, the largest study offering more proof that organic is the best. So I want to share some, some of the reasons why I buy organic and why I think you should too and why it's cheaper. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, that's a false statement because I know the organic broccoli cost X and the conventional cost less and so you're lying to me. Yeah, in the grocery store it is a little less. But when it comes to your life and how much it's going to cost you down the line, that's when you start to realize how much it really costs you. My grandfather used to tell me, always buy the best, it's always cheaper. And we've all done that. We've, we went cheap. I remember buying a cheap suitcase one time, and that was not a good idea. So buying the best always makes life a lot easier. And when it comes to food, you're going to save so much money in the long run. Because even though organic broccoli might cost a little more than non-organic broccoli, when you start looking at what it's replacing – that's where you see the major savings. So I haven't bought a piece of meat in over 30 years. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't eat meat or any animal products. But if I was going to buy a piece of meat, let's say it's, I don't know, $6. Is that right? $7? Nobody's here in the studio to ask, so I'll, I'll just assume I'm right. You can buy a lot of organic beans for $7. You can buy a lot of organic broccoli for $7. I know I, uh, there was some frozen organic broccoli florets the other day, and it was... Six dollars for two pounds, I think it was. Clean, washed, ready to go. And so I can take that broccoli and I could cook it up with some sauces, you know, make a stir fry. I can buy Indian sauces, you know, pre made, pour that over it and eat that for lunch. That's a whole lot cheaper or dinner than anything else I could ever buy. And if I bought a piece of steak, a pound, it's going to cook down. Broccoli isn't going to cook down. So I'm just using broccoli as an example. But let me give you the multiple reasons why I want you to really consider cutting back on your conventional produce and going more organic. And certainly, 100% cutting out your uh, non-organic animal products if you eat them and going to organic animal products. Organic fruits and vegetables contain 20 to 40% more disease-fighting antioxidants compared to chemically grown counterparts. In fact, eating only organic food is the equivalent of eating an extra serving of fruits and vegetables a day without eating more food. So right there, you're going to save money. If you're supposed to eat five servings of, raw, of fruits and vegetables a day, you can only eat four and still get the same benefits. It lowers your poisonous metals. This is so big. In our, in our office, we do hair analysis is one of the tests that we do. And we can just snip a little bit of hair off. Or you can get it from anywhere in the body. And what will happen is we can analyze it to see if you have heavy metal toxicity. Most people do. Organic food is up to 48% lower in cadmium, which is a toxic compound found in fertilizers. It's also been linked to breast cancer and kidney stones. Now, in hair analysis, it's kind of cool because I found that I was uh, selenium deficient. And I was just starting to go gray at the time when I found this out. So I started taking a selenium supplement and eating more selenium-rich foods, and my gray hair went away. So that's kind of cool. I had a friend of mine come visit me the other day, my friend Lou from New Jersey, and he comes walking up to my house and he goes, when are you going to go gray, Espo? When's, it, wh wh when's that going? Because he was all gray beard, gray hair. And I said, hopefully never. So as long as I keep giving my body all the nutrients that it needs, hopefully I'll stay that. Now, as you get older, you don't metabolize things like you used to. And so I may go gray someday just because I'm getting older, but I'm doing everything I can to fight that. And I look at it as a, a symptom. Something's wrong. Why is it? Why is the hair growing gray? Now, you might not be selenium. I'm just throwing that out there, but it, it, it worked for me. Plants exposed to pesticides produce fewer natural pest defenses like polyphenols and phenols. They naturally occur in compounds that can protect your organs and lower your anxiety levels. 
Organic plants boost uh, bo- uh, boast much higher levels of flavonoid level of uh, flavonoids, some cases up to 70% higher. And a good example of this, organic versus non-organic, is wine. Now, you may have heard that a certain wine is good for your heart. What color? Red. Exactly. It's not the red wine that's good for your heart. It's the red that's good for your heart. It's the polyphenols and the resveratrol, and that's where you're getting your benefits. Now, what happens is if you eat non-organic grapes, and this goes for grapes now too, the grapes are being exposed to things like fungus. And so the grapes produce these natural antifungal ingredients like resveratrol or polyphenols, and they produce it to protect themselves from the outside invaders. If you buy commercial wine or commercial grapes, we spray the grapes with an anti-fungicide. So the grapes are not being, or fungicide, I don't know if it's anti-fungicide, I guess it's just a fungicide. Um, it, we spray the fungicide on the grapes. Now the grapes are not being exposed to the fungus, so they're not producing the resveratrol. So if you think you're drinking, drinking red wine for the resveratrol, the heart benefits and reversing of the aging process with resveratrol, you're sadly wrong. So here you are thinking you're doing your body good by drinking wine, but it has to be organic or else you're not going to get all the benefits. And if you want the resveratrol at a medicinal level, you have to drink about a half a case to a case of wine a day. Now, This is not permission from Dr. Joe for you to go out and drink a half a case to a case of wine a day. No. What I'm telling you is, is it good? Eh, Probably not. And I think the the effects of the alcohol far outweigh any benefits that it might cause. So the fewer chemicals, the better. It's not enough to just wash your non-organic vegetables. Many chemicals are systemic. What that means is they've taken up inside the plants when you eat them. In fact, a recent Norwegian study found there's actually extreme levels of eating glyphosate, which is a weed killer, uh, when you eat these plants. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a show, and I talked about how we spray a lot of plant farmers, I don't know how many, are spraying glyphosate, weed killer, on their wheat crops. So it kills the wheat crop right before it's harvested. Well, why do we do that? It's easier to harvest plants are alive, it's a lot more stress on the machines. If they're dead, it's a lot easier to pull the wheat berries off the, uh, off the wheat stalks. And somebody sent me an email and he said, well, I've, I've been in a, I was in the uh, farming industry for many years ago and I never heard of this. So I sent them some of the research and the links that I had found and he never, I never heard back from him. So, so even if you're eating plain old wheat, wheat is not good because it has gluten in it. Gluten is a lectin. Lectins are proteins that can actually tear little holes in your colon. If we tear little holes in your colon, you have what's called leaky gut syndrome. These relatively big chunks of proteins or foods can get absorbed into your gut. Your immune system doesn't recognize them because they're not digested down to what they should be. So the immune system starts attacking them, and you can have an autoimmune condition. Had a patient come in the other day. She had a double lung transplant. She had cystic fibrosis and couldn't breathe, so she had a double lung transplant. And as we were chatting, 27 years old, very pretty girl, I said, did they ever tell you not to eat dairy products? Well, no. Dairy products produce mucus. What don't you want in your body if you have somebody else's lungs in there? More mucus. I said, what about wheat, lectins? Nope, never heard of that either. So unfortunately, I, I, I wish more information was given when people have surgeries, like gallbladder. If you have your gallbladder removed, you've got to be really careful about the types of fat you eat. And it's never given. That information is never given. And I, I wish it was because I maybe, I mean, she probably would have died and probably needed this lung transplant. So I'm, I'm supporting that. I'm just not happy with the fact that they didn't tell her what to do afterwards. Same thing with gallbladder surgeries or most surgeries, even heart disease. All right. You had a triple bypass, quadruple bypass. And so we fixed all that. I don't know many times of a doctor then saying, well, let's talk about why you needed the triple quadruple bypass and what we need to do to fix that. Because if you go back to your old habits, it's going to come right back. Cancer, same thing. So I digress. So the organic grapes we talked about, the glyphosate, is that's a spray we, ta- we put on the plants and it can kill the plant, but it can also start to kill you. And glyphosate prevents the plant from absorbing certain nutrients from the soil. It's been linked to infertility, uh, neurological issues. 
it's a big deal. And if you're not eating uh, only organic, if you're eating some conventional foods, chances are you're eating glyphosate. And uh, I predict, and I'm usually right in my predictions, I've been doing this for over 30 years now, is that in the next five to 10 years, glyphosate is going to be replaced with something else. Because many times when there's something on the market that's so toxic, it kind of just quietly goes away, like metal fillings in teeth. Metal fillings in teeth are mercury. And mercury is a highly toxic, heavy metal that gets into your brain and can cause real serious nerve damage. And so some people don't react to it as much as others. And now you're seeing that dentists don't use mercury anymore. Well, one of the reasons I believe, my opinion, is that we're pulling these things from the market so that we slowly kind of make the public kind of forget we use them. And if you have metal fillings, I will tell you this, I had metal fillings and I would strongly advise you have them removed because they will crack, all fillings crack, and they can release mercury vapor into your body. If you have them removed, I recommend you go to someone called a biological dentist. I know of only one or two in the uh, Atlanta area I know. Um, and have them removed the right way because if they're taken out the wrong way, the mercury and the vapors can get into your body and cause damage. So it's my stumping for mercury fillings there or against mercury fillings actually. So fewer chemicals, um, if they're non-organic, chances are we're using a weed killer on them. And if it's genetically modified, eh, it's a whole nother show. I've done shows before on genetic modification. You can go to my website, drjoesposito.com. And we have lots of, uh, we have hundreds of hours of archive radio shows, and you could look up GMOs in there and listen to that. I don't want to go on a whole GMO rant. I can do that for a few hours. Uh, Better fat. If you're eating organic milk, it's higher in brain-healthy omega-3 fatty acids. And a lot of that is uh, thanks in part to spending more time out in the pasture, which is a requirement for organic uh, animal products. Not only does non-organic milk contain lower levels of good fats, they also have higher levels of dangerous inflammatory fats like omega-6 fatty acids. So now you have these inflammatory fats, not enough of the good stuff. <sighs> Why not spend an extra buck or two? Get the organic. I don't do animal products, so I, I'm, I, I don't ever worry about that. But just do it. Get the organic ones. You're going to do a lot better. Fewer superbugs. Over 90,000 lives are lost every year to antibody- antibiotic-resistant superbug infections. My mother had knee surgery a couple of years ago. Boy, was that ever botched. I, I won't go into all the details there, but she had nine surgeries in one year. And then the doctor finally said, well, at your age, Rose, we should probably just cut your leg off. What? Cut your leg off? It's not like I'm going to get a haircut. It's not like I'm going to skip breakfast. Cut your leg off is a pretty serious thing. She said no. And now she walks with a walker, unfortunately. It never healed properly, but she still has her leg. And at one point, they said she has MRSA, which is a a superbug. And one doctor said yes, one doctor said no. So to this day, we don't know if she ever had it or not. And we're assuming she doesn't because the test came back negative. But 90,000 people a year die from antibiotic-resistant superbugs because they were in the hospital. They had the surgeries. And I'm not saying the hospitals are doing a bad job. It's that we've we've created these monsters. Non-organic farms feed low-dose antibiotics to their animals daily, usually, to speed up the growth and get the animal to slaughter faster because when we make money by selling the animal by the pound as quickly as possible. Trouble is germs exposed to drugs regularly are able to outsmart the drugs. And often they're even hiding out in your meat in the grocery store. So what happens is whenever we attack nature, nature mutates and fights back. These superbugs are doing nothing more than trying to survive. They're doing just what you would do. So if you keep getting exposed to these toxic chemicals and you're one of these superbugs, over time, you mutate. You mutate. You mutate. You're more than 30% less likely to come in contact with superbugs in meat supply if you choose organic. So there's another reason to go organic, especially with animals. Food not grown in human sewage. This is enough to make you sick here. It's perfectly legal for non-organic farmers to douse their non-organic fields with human sewage. Yes, it is what you think it is. Taken from municipal water plants as fertilizer for their crops. The sludge can contain whatever uh, residues uh, industrial parks decide to put down the drain. Um, When you eat, when you take a drug, any type of drug, it's filtered out and it, it goes out through your urine and your feces. Well, what happens is we can filter out viruses, germs, and bacteria from our water, 
but we don't have filters to filter out drug residue. So you're eating drug residue. So if somebody, you know, takes a birth control pill and then pees, eventually it's probably going to end up in your water system. That's why I recommend a water filter for everyone. I have a whole house water filter. Um, I want to filter out as much as I possibly can. So the human sludge is in there. It's pretty gross. That's what you're eating. Um, you can detect shampoo chemicals and non-organic tomatoes. So if you're using the sludge, you're going to get a lot of these toxins just dumped onto the plant. So folks, a lot of this stuff is scary. And if you want to do everything you can to get well and stay well, you'd like to make an appointment to come see us, we'd love to have you come into our offices. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Uh, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world, and we'll set you up a time to come see us. We accept people with all insurances, people without insurance, car accidents, sports injuries. So as a chiropractor, most people think of neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches. We're really good at that stuff, as most doctors are. But we also want to get your digestive system working. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea, many times we have to adjust the digestive system itself. And then we do a nutritional workup on our patients. We want to make sure that you're getting all the uh, proper nutrients in your body as well. So if you want to make an appointment, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. We can usually set you up within 48 hours. Be ready to get well, and make sure you show up for your appointment, because my goal is to naturally get you well and keep you well. That's what this show is all about. We're te teaching you to naturally get well and stay well. So to make an appointment, drjoesposito.com. Now, on my website, we archive radio shows, videos. Uh, if So if you want to listen to these archive radio shows or watch videos of my live lectures, oh, check out my live lectures. Love to have you come out to my live lectures. And like me on Facebook, too. And better yet, send me your email address, and I'll put you on my newsletter list. We, we send out very few newsletters. But make announcements when I'm doing lectures and where around the world I'm speaking. A lot of them are no charge, but this way you stay in touch. Because with Facebook... If you know how Facebook works, I can post something. Not all of my, I have almost 5,000 friends now, see it. Only a select few. And then we have to boost it and pay and everything. And sometimes we do, but sometimes we don't. So if you want to really stay in touch, just send me your email address at drjoesposito.com and we can keep you in touch. But like me on Facebook too. We send out a lot of good information there. So what we're talking about today is organic better. And you want to protect yourself from weird food additives. Organic has a clear advantage when it comes to packaged foods, too. Instead of harmful artificial food dyes that are linked to brain damage and ADD, organic food processors use different things. So, for example, if you're going to get an organic food and it's red, they're probably using beet powder or beet juice as opposed to using a red dye number or whatever. And beet juice, which is interesting, is high in nitrates, good nitrates. Nitrates convert into nitric oxide in your body, which open up your blood vessels and help circulation. So one of the tricks that I recommend some folks, because many times people come in and say, well, doc, I'm having problems in the uh, romantic department. We'll keep it clean. It's a family show. Or they're having memory problems or they have cold hands or cold feet. We want to first fix the nervous system because the nervous system controls everything. So if you have a pinched nerve, we as chiropractors realign the spine and fix that. Then, if we still have a circulatory issue, I may recommend adding to my Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, which, by the way, everyone should be taking every day, almost everyone. Uh, it's two powders. I mix it with coconut milk because I don't drink uh, milk, but you, if, uh, I have, you can use water. You can use whatever you want, but um, I take a scoop of that every day. That's the minimum amount of nutrients that you need. Then, if somebody needs a circulatory boost, I'll tell them to go get some beet powder, organic beet, B-E-E-T, beet powder. And add about a half a teaspoon of that, shake it up and drink it. And that converts into nitric oxide, which opens up the blood vessels. And I've had many men who may have had uh, issues in that department, keeping it clean, uh, start taking the beet powder along with the super greens, the essential source, and report back that they are very, very happy with the results. So you get what I'm saying here. So beet juice, if we're going to do something organic and use beet juice to dye it, make it red, is actually going to have some nutritional benefits as well. Non-organic farmers don't use something called glyphosate, the weed killer that so many of you use on a regular basis. Government studies have now detected glyphosate even in rain. Tiny amounts of American most popular weed killer can damage your DNA and kill cells, and they've been linked to infertility and certain types of cancers. Once again, I predict that glyphosate will be off the market in about five to ten years. Very quietly, it's just going to you know, go quietly into the, 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 the night. 
because there's going to be so much repercussion from using it. And in fact, there's even talk of bringing back DDT. It may have even happened already. Uh, DDT was a, pet, a weed killer that was used, and we found it in animals. We found it in babies. We found it in mother's milk, and it was banned, certainly in the United States. But they're talking about bringing it back because glyphosate isn't working anymore because nature, in its awesome wisdom, has learned to mutate and kind of not have, be affected as much by glyphosate as, as, as plants used to be. So be careful with that. Better for the bees. This is a big issue. I think it was Cheerio started a campaign. The, the bee was their uh, mascot, and they put it on the picture, the cover of their box as a cereal. And uh, recently, I don't know if they're still doing it, there was just a silhouette of the bee. And they said, what happened to whatever the bee's name is? I don't know. And so they were putting a, a packet of wildflower seeds in with uh, their cereal. So you can plant wildflowers to attract more bees. So I think that's a very good idea. If you like planting flowers, plant a lot of flowers to feed the bees because things like glyphosate and weed killer, along with cell phone towers, I believe, are killing off the bees. If the bees die, folks, we die. The bees pollinate our crops, so we eat. Even if you're a meat eater, you never eat a vegetable. Those cows and pigs and chickens are eating plants, and they need the bees. So going organic helps save the pesticides, which is going to help save uh, the bees as well, which is kind of nice. Uh, 92% of corn is genetically modified. 90%, 94% of soy is genetically modified. Using things like glyphosate to spray on it. When you genetically modify a plant, two things happen. Number one is they produce their own pesticides. Um, so that when it bugs eat them, they die. Or two, we can now spray things like glyphosate on the plant so the plant doesn't die, but the weeds around it do. But as I said, nature's mutating, and we're having more and more weeds that are becoming glyphosate resistant, and you're still soaking up this glyphosate into the corn, the soy, whatever it is that you're eating. They've even genetically modified salmon now, and they're much bigger than regular salmon and much more aggressive. Now, supposedly, these salmon are only raised in, in farms and they're not put in nature. However, what's going to happen, I predict, and other scientists have too, these, somebody's going to let these genetically modified salmon into the wild. They're going to start mating with the regular salmon. They're very aggressive. They're going to take over the food supply. And probably, once this happens, there'll be a generation or two of salmon left, and then there won't even be any natural salmon anymore. So I'm not... Uh, conspiracy theorist. I'm not one that's you know too reactionary, but this looks like it's pretty bad. I've seen the, I've seen videos of the wild of the genetically modified salmon. They're scary. So hang on to your hang on to your socks, there, kids. Uh, not not good stuff is going to happen. So if the bugs are eating these plants and dying, and the animals, uh, the corn, the soy, the animals that you're eating are eating this, you're getting these chemicals in your body as well. And more and more studies are coming out almost on a daily basis showing how bad these weed killers are. So I'm going to strongly advise that you stay away from these weed killers. And the way we do that is by eating a more plant-based or organic diet. Plant-based is good, uh, but organic as well. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to decipher the healthy labels. What, how do you find organic? What is cage-free? What is pasture, grass-fed, natural? A lot of these terms can be very confusing and I'm confused. I had to look these up way when they first come out, and every now and then a new one comes out, and I don't even know what they mean. So if I can't figure it out, I'm going to venture a guess that you probably can't figure it out either. But um, if you want to listen to this and hundreds of hours of other shows, if you want to watch videos of my live lectures that I do, they're on my website, no charge, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. And if you have questions, you can send them to me through the website, drjoesposito.com, and I'm more than happy to answer your healthcare questions. If you'd like to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, and you can book an appointment online or you can call us. We accept people with all insurances. We accept people without insurances, car accidents, sports injuries, workers' comp, Medicare. Yep, we even accept Medicare. So we want to be your doctor. We want to help get your nervous system working for pain and joint and arthritis problems. We want to get your digestive system working for acid reflux, heartburn, diarrhea, constipation, then you're going to absorb your nutrients better. And we want to put together a nutrition protocol specifically for you. 
because everybody has different nutrition needs. We want to customize one just for you. But at least get Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're on the website, along with my books, and also on Amazon as well. Hey, folks, listen, I got to take a break. I want you to do me a favor. At the break, go tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, this is the show where we naturally teach you to get well and stay well. We want to be your doctors. We want to help you get over your health crisis and then plan to stay healthy for the rest of your life. That's the big thing is people don't usually have a plan to get well. And if they do have a plan to get well, maybe they need surgery. Maybe you have to uh, uh, take medications. But then the question arises, what can I do to fix this? What can I do to get better faster? Many times doctors will send me patients and say, Dr. Joe, this patient, we're thinking about doing surgery on them, but I want your, your team of doctors to work on them for a little bit and let's see if we can uh, prevent the surgery. And many times we can, sometimes we can't. And if we can't, at least the person's getting healthy going into the surgery and getting healthy coming out of the surgery. I'm not against drugs and surgery. I'm against unnecessary use of drugs and surgery. And that's where the difference is. And so we're talking today about organic foods. Are they worth it? And the answer uh, resounding is yes. You're avoiding a lot of steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, tranquilizers, genetically modified foods. What a mess. Before 1980, we didn't have to worry about a lot of this. And if you remember, if you're old enough, that uh, peaches were juicy and watermelon was sweet. Uh, milk had cream and flavor. Remember that? I don't drink milk, so I, don't, I, I do remember milk, though. And I remember the milk would separate. And you have to shake it up before you drink it. Now we pasteurize. We homogenize. If you took the milk that we sell in a grocery store and fed it to a baby cow, that cow would die in a few days. Because when you pasteurize something, you cook something, you destroy all the enzymes and the nutrients in it. So we've got to be really careful what we put in our bodies because, is it, I mean, think how amazing your body is. You can eat a double beef cheeseburger and a milkshake and somehow, some way, it converts into eye tissue or liver or kidney or hair. Now, it's not the best source of nutrients, of course, and over time, you're going to suffer. You're always going to have to pay for your sins. But the body is just amazing. So we really take it for granted what our body can do. And you start getting an awareness of what your body is going through, you really start to respect it. Because you got to remember, about 90 to 99% of the DNA in our body is not human. It's bacteria. So we really are just life support for bacteria and then they give us a little of their waste product, and that's what we live on. That's really all we are. And so if we take care of these bacteria, talk to them, sing to them. I don't do that, but you can if you want. Um, they're going to treat you better. But if you give them junk food and junk uh, chemicals, they're not going to respond very well. So organic is a much better choice than not organic because you're not getting all the chemicals and pesticides. It's better for the environment. Long way, Long term, it's cheaper. Because when you do eat conventional foods and what we call the SAD diet, the standard American diet, you're eating a lot of the seven deadly sins of nutrition. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. And so when you do eat these foods, the body uh, doesn't respond very well. And eventually, you're going to have a, a shutdown of your health. And that can get real costly. So why not just take it easy and, and cheap right now? And you're going to save a ton of money over a lifetime. I spend so little money on food compared to everybody else. I know I had a friend of mine, and uh, she started eating right. And she said she went from spending whatever it was, 100 100 plus dollars a, a week in groceries to $30 a week in groceries. She goes, I have all this extra money. It's great. And I feel better. And I've lost weight. And I look younger. And I said, good. So it's all working for you. She goes, absolutely. And she said, too, as many people do. In fact, I literally just got a text. Uh, about Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Just crazy good stuff. It's fruits and vegetables. It's like juice in a powder form. We take fruits and vegetables, we juice it, take the water out. We add that powder to prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin. Uh, it's just so crazy good. I take it at least once a day. And if I'm going to do something you know, that's going to be strenuous, if I'm going hiking, if I'm going on a long date, if I'm going to radio shows, I'll oftentimes take a double dose. No, those are available on my website, Super Greens and Essential Source, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. I tell people, listen, if, if you're not convinced you need it, get a month's supply. Take a scoop of each every day. Watch what happens. But I just, like I said, I just got a text from somebody who said, just started taking the Super Greens a couple of days ago. Feel great. Energy through the, through the roof. Sleeping better. Thank you. 
So it's kind of cool. So when it comes to organic, it can be a little tricky sometimes because there's different words that are used and you, like me, have fallen for it. I promise you, you have. So you're busy, you're running errands, you go to work, you run into the grocery store, you're trying to grab as much stuff as you can as fast as possible. I know one of my friends I was talking to said his wife just wants to do it all online now, just have it delivered. She doesn't have time. But with stores stocking more choices than ever, food labels get a little crazy. It has more protein. It has added calcium. It's uh, more antioxidants. What the heck does all that mean? Added calcium. I love that one. Most times, in fact, I've never seen it not, they add something called calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is not a good source of calcium. Calcium carbonate can actually block up your calcium receptor sites and prevent you from absorbing the good calcium. So it's, it's, it's oyster shells, basically. Oyster shells are chalk. Now, you wouldn't eat chalk and you wouldn't eat oyster shells, but for some reason, if we grind it up and put it in a pill, you pay extra for it. So if you're going to do a calcium supplement, and by the way, most people don't need a calcium supplement, you want to do calcium citrate or calcium lactate, not calcium carbonate. So again, just confusing. I, I've seen uh, uh, milk, and no, orange juice. I think it was orange juice with fortified calcium, and it was calcium carbonate. And then I've seen this one too, calcify, uh, fortified with vitamin D. And this one health food store that I go to, health food store, I laugh at that term, um, their store brand, fortified with vitamin D, and it's vitamin D2. Vitamin D2 is a synthetic version of vitamin D3, not nearly as effective, but it's cheap. So once again, you've really got to learn how to read the labels, even when it comes to organic. Just stepped on my own shoelace there. Sorry about that. So certified organic. The produce, this term means the plants are grown without genetically modified seeds. They're grown without pesticides, herbicides, without human sewage. Yes, we can use human waste products as fertilizer in our plants, and they have not been irradiated. For meats and poultry, certified organic seal meals, the animals were fed organic feed, with no animal byproducts, so no ground-up livers and spleens and kidneys and bones and skin and waste products, which they do sometimes, and not given antibiotics or hormones and had some, but not necessarily much, access to the outdoors. So that's the minimum requirements uh, for certified organic. For packaged foods to be certified organic, it must must be made up of at least 95% uh, certified organic ingredients. If the label states made with organic ingredients. Got it? Certified organic versus made with organic. Made with organic must contain 70% organic ingredients. So it's good to look at what you're buying. If you have questions, of tons of farmer's markets popping up everywhere. And I like going to farmer's markets. It's a nice way to spend a Sunday morning, kind of walk around, get some fresh air, and see some cool stuff. And many times you'll try things you never tried before, which is kind of fun food-wise. Uh, you can buy from small local farmers, then maybe you'll get a better idea as to where this stuff is coming from. But be careful with the label and what it all means. Cage-free. This goes for eggs, of course. The term cage-free means the hens are not confined to cages, but they do not necessarily have access to outdoor space. So cage-free means you could have a big room with the chickens essentially shoulder to shoulder, and that just means it's cage-free. It's probably better from a stress standpoint for the chickens than being stuck in a cage, but it can, it doesn't really change what they're fed. Unless it says organic cage free, they can still be fed grains that have been genetically modified, that have been heavily treated with chemical pesticides, and then you're eating the egg, which means you're eating these chemicals too. There's no mandatory third party auditing for cage free. So the, without a certification like Certified Humane or Animal Welfare Approval Seal, anybody can say they're cage-free. Yeah. Do they do it and lie? I don't know. I don't raise chickens. However, once again, the only word that makes a difference is organic. Now, as a chiropractor, my job is I want to make sure your nervous system is working the best it can. So from a structural standpoint, we do chiropractic adjustments on all 206 bones in the body if necessary. But you need to take responsibility for the chemical aspects because the chemistry you put in your body is what's going to make up your nervous system. It's going to make up your blood vessels. It's going to make up your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, your gallbladder. So if you're putting junk chemicals in, even if all the wires are working properly, they're still junk chemicals. So you want to make sure the chemistry is right and the structure is right. That's really important. Range-free, found on poultry and egg packaging. This term means that the hens have access to the outdoors. 
Now, the amount, the duration, or the quality is not specified. So they can kind of open the door and say, hey, chicken, do you want to go out? Oh, you don't? Okay, and close the door. So they have access to the outdoors. Doesn't mean they're going out there. So unless they're raised organic, free-range animals may still be given antibiotics and pesticides. So once again, tricky word there. You're thinking range-free because people come in all the time. And I'll say, listen, if you're going to eat animal products, I want you to eat organic only. And they say, oh, I still only eat organic. I said, really? The egg carton, what does it say? It says, oh, it says uh, cage-free. Okay, that's not organic. No, no, it says cage-free. I understand that. Does it say organic? No, then it's not organic. So you think you're doing the right thing, and you're not. That's where the problem comes in. So range-free, it's probably a little better than cage-free, but again, no mandatory third-party auditing for the term. So if you want to look for terms for third-party certification, look for things like Certified Humane or American Humane. Uh, that's what you're looking for, American Humane Certified. The only This term can only apply if it says pasture-raised. It can only apply to meats as well as eggs, but pasture animals are often reared in grassland where they're able to eat a diverse diet such as grass, bugs, and other natural vegetation that lends their meat or dairy to be better in flavor. So I've heard. I don't eat animal products and also higher in omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are fatty acids that your brain needs, your whole body needs, to function normally. And you can get them from eating animal products. Uh, Fish, of course, is the first thing you think about, but it can be found in meats and dairy products as well, but they have to be organic. If they're not organic, you're not going to get the big bang for your buck. So pasture raised can mean a lot of different things, but unfortunately, there's no mandatory third party auditing again, so I can stick it on my cow if I wanted to, just like you could. So it's best to buy pastured meat and eggs from a local pr- producer if you know them, or look for the word, what's the word again? Organic. There you go. The organic word is so key, and especially when it comes to meats and dairy products, because the other... F- plants are bad. They're sprayed many times, or they may have some genetically modified uh, seeds that they grew them from. But if you're eating the non-organic animal products, we know that these plants, well, we almost know, that these animals were fed plants that were loaded with genetically modified foods and pesticides, and they concentrate these toxins in their fat cells. I always say if you're fat, you're not fat, you're toxic. I used to be fat, so I can say the F word on radio. If you're fat, you're not fat, you're toxic. And so the programs that I work with my patients on for weight loss is not only giving your body the nutrients that it needs to stop the cravings that you have, but also get the junk that's been stored in all these fat cells out of the fat cells. It's not hard to do. It's easy. It happens quickly. It's really inexpensive. You feel great. The only downside is the junky food tastes good. Not going to lie to you. Junky food tastes good. But if you start thinking logically, if you listen to enough of my radio shows and enough of my lectures, read enough of my books, you'll finally come to the realization to say, you know, Dr. Joe's right. And I tell people this, do what I say for 60 days, everything I say for 60 days. Don't cheat. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So what? I blew it. But if I'm right, which I am, then you can say, Dr. Joe is right. I want to live this lifestyle for the rest of my life. It really is worth it. That's why without Super Greens, our essential source, they've been tested. They've tested on a regular basis for pesticide levels. And there are none. If there are any, we, we, we won't buy those raw materials. So that's why I recommend you do take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's essential source at least once a day. You'll be really happy in most cases with the results. I don't think very few people are not happy. Again, if people do what I say, it's very rare that they're not happy with it because it does work. So back to the, the certified grass, grass-fed. U.S. Department of Agriculture has defined grass-fed beef, bison, lamb, goats, and dairy as coming from animals that ate 100% grass, which is no corn and no soy, and enjoy continuous access to the pasture. There's a couple of loopholes in there. So look for products from farmers certified by the American Grass-Fed Association. But again, grass-fed is okay. Organic is going to always meet the standards. So when you're doing it, you don't have to worry about grass-fed and pastured and free-range and uh, cage-free or whatever other words we're using. The word organic is going to encompass all of that. And I looked the other day. I don't eat eggs. But a a dozen eggs that were organic were, I don't know, 72 cents more than the non-organic eggs. It was something really close. And I thought, why wouldn't you want to spend 72 cents for 12 eggs? What does that come to? A couple of pennies an egg? 
and you're going to get a lot more nutrients, higher levels of, of uh, vitamin A, uh, well, beta carotene, uh, higher levels of uh, omega-3 fatty acids. And I heard through the grapevine that they actually taste better too. And I learned, and I learned that about organic food. It almost always tastes better. So folks, if you have a healthcare problem, I know we're talking a little about chemistry here, but if you have a healthcare problem, you want to come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We would love to have you come in as patients. We accept patients with all insurance, people without insurance, uh, auto accidents, uh, sports injuries, Medicare, workers' comp. If you've ever been in a car accident and the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time, whether it was yesterday or 50 years ago. And the longer you wait, the more damage occurs. Because if bones are out of alignment, they rub up against each other and they wear out. And that's called osteoarthritis. So if you have osteoarthritis and nobody ever told you why, now you know. Because the joints are out of alignment, rubbing up against each other. The fix for that is realign the joints. So if you want to make an appointment, again, offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, drjoesposito.com is the website, or just Google Dr. Joe. We're the first ones that come up. And you can book an appointment right online. You can call us during business hours. We're more than happy to answer any questions for you. We'll set you up usually within 24 to 48 hours. We can get you in pretty quickly if we have to. If not, we can put it out in the future. But be ready to make changes in your life. Because if we find something I think we can help and we can accept you as a patient, we want to get you well as fast as possible. And please make sure you show up for your appointment. Because if you don't show up, you're taking that appointment away from somebody else. That's bad karma. And whether you believe in karma or not, if you do crappy things to people, crappy things happen to you. It just does. So if you want to make an appointment, be sure you show up. DrJoeEsposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. So more labels that you might read in the grocery store that you don't understand, something like natural. And this is a biggie because this is on so many different products. It refers to a product that's made without artificial flavors, colors, or synthetic substances. However, foods labeled natural can still contain things like high fructose corn syrup, natural flavors. That can be anything from a real natural flavor to monosodium glutamate. And reality, things like monosodium glutamate are made in the laboratory. Even worse, a recent study by Consumer Reports found that many products labeled natural contain genetically modified ingredients. Now, if you don't know what genetically modified ingredients are, I have several shows. I think I've done several shows. I archive them on my website, drjoesposito.com, and you can listen to the shows. No charge. I don't charge you to listen to these shows. The the archives, the podcasts, whatever you want to call them, are there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So what I recommend you do is if you're listening to shows either, you know, on the air or if you just go to a website and listen and you see a topic that you think would interest someone else, send them the link. Let them listen to it. Because these shows are heard all over the world, which is amazing to me because I know some countries don't, uh, English is not their first language and I talk really fast. So if you guys out there listening, I appreciate that. Thank you for listening. I I do appreciate you from all over the world because I get emails and patients from all over the world. So I know that. So Listen to the shows and then share them with your friends because it's really good information and your friends are going to really enjoy uh, knowing these things and they're going to say thank you because the biggest thing I hear from patients is why didn't somebody tell me this sooner? Why did I suffer with headaches when it was a pinched nerve in my neck? Why didn't somebody tell me that artificial sweetener, number one side effect is headaches? Why didn't somebody tell me that if you eat a plant-based diet high in fiber and cut out the sugars, you can stabilize diabetes in many cases? Or I didn't have to have diarrhea every day of my life because it was a pinched nerve in my low back going to my bowels or my colon was spasmed. So this isn't information that's quite mainstream yet. It will be. Everything we talk about, it goes mainstream sooner or later. So share this with your friends because it's really good information. The word no hormones. Oh, back to natural. I'm sorry. Uh, You can buy packaged foods based on a natural claim, but you really want to read the ingredients. And a good, good rule is this, is if you can't pronounce an ingredient, don't eat it. Now, there are some things you can't pronounce, and I totally get that. But generally speaking, as a general rule, if it's something that you can't pronounce, you don't want to eat it. And also, you probably want to do the eight ingredient rule. Anything more with eight ingredients, uh, you probably don't want to eat anyway. Unless it's like, you know, tomatoes and carrots and cucumbers, like a soup or something with all natural ingredients in it, uh, real organic ingredients. But if you pick up a package and you can't read the, understand the ingredients, you probably don't want to eat it anyway. And the thing is that there's so many foods that you can eat that are so cheap and so easy, easy access. 
Uh, salads are great, of course. I have a salad at least once a day. I start my day with Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Um, sometimes I'll put beet powder in there if I want to get crazy. And then snack is usually a couple of handfuls of nuts, almonds, walnuts, pecans, pistachios, avocados, hazelnuts. Lunch is usually a salad. Uh, for some reason recently, I'm getting a lot of people wanting to take me out to lunch. So if I go out to lunch, the, I'll go out for Korean food. Korean food has something called bibimbap. I know it's a fun word. And it's uh, vegetables and some rice and um, it's a little sauce in there. Um, but that's something I'll eat. If, I, if we will go to a sushi place, I'll just have avocado sushi as opposed to fish sushi. Um, but I try to do a salad at least once a day. And then you could also try to skip a meal, preferably dinner. Because when you skip a meal, it's called intermittent fasting. Your body gets to rest and heal. Because every time you eat, it takes eight hours to digest that food. And if you're eating every eight hours, you're digesting constantly. Let the bowels and the whole nervous system shut down for a little bit. Take the stress off it, and you'll be amazed how much better you feel. I had lunch with a friend of mine the other day, and he said, Joe, what's your thoughts on intermittent fasting? And I said, oh, I have a whole chapter of, on it my new book. He goes, oh, my gosh, I've been doing it. This is about twice a week. I skipped dinner. I said, absolutely. He goes, I feel so much better. So skipping a meal is good because it saves a lot of energy that you'd be using for everything else. You're using it for digestion. Now you could use that energy for everything else um, from your personal life. I'll keep it clean for kids listening um, to sleeping better, to your work life, to being a better churchgoer, mother, father, sister, brother. It's, energy is, is, is like gas in your car. You use it up and you got to keep replacing it. If you don't use it as much, you have it for future references there. So try the intermittent fasting, and if you need more information, it's in my book, uh, Prescription for Extreme Health. It's in that book if you want to get that. Uh, the supplements, the books, they're on Amazon and are also at my website, drjoesposito.com. No hormones. Love this one. Label on meat and dairy products means the hormones were not used in the production of the products. It should be noted that the USDA already prohibits the use of hormones in pork and poultry. So if you see a poultry that says no hormones... Eh, of course, there's no hormones. It's like saying there's no hormones. Well, I can't say that in, in plants either anymore, but there is no hormones. Now, many times with poultry, they'll give them antibiotics, and the antibiotics act like hormones to cause increased growth. And many people, myself included, believe that one of the reasons we have the obesity crisis in this country and all around the world is because we're adding so many growth hormones to our plants and our animals that when you eat them, they work. They create growth. The other kicker is high fructose corn syrup. I was just talking to one of my coworkers this morning, and we talked about soda. And she goes, oh, this, oh she's planning a picnic. That's right, for the company. And she said, I know I got to pick up drinks, and I don't want to get a lot of soda because I don't drink soda, and we really shouldn't, but some people still do, and the artificial sweeteners. And she's listened to my show many times. So, yeah, you want to stay away from that. And high fructose corn syrup is way worse than plain old sugar. And in fact, around the world, and I know in Atlanta, Georgia, they have a, uh, a, a museum for one of the big soda fact companies, and they have samples of their soda from all around the world. And a lot of places around the world use sugar because uh, high fructose corn syrup has been banned because high fructose corn syrup many times, I think always, I'm not sure of that though, is made from genetically modified corn. And if genetically modified foods are banned in that country, they can't use the high fructose corn syrup made from GMO corn, so they use sugar. And a lot of countries like the taste of sugar anyway. It is a difference. If you ever get the chance to taste soda with sugar again, uh, usually in the United States, you can get them in uh, some uh, ethnic grocery stores. Try the one with the sugar, and you'll see, you'll see the difference. And you'll say, wow, there really is a difference. It's not nearly as sugary, disgusting, sweet. So to answer the question, and a simple answer, the answer is yes. Is organic worth it? Yes, it is. It's way better for nutritional levels. It's better for lower your toxic levels. Uh, it's better for the environment. There really is no downside. And if you're eating a good plant-based diet and staying away from the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, you're going to save a ton of money. So the answer is go organic. You're going to be very happy with that. If you'd like to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We would love the opportunity to be your doctor. So if you want to make an appointment to come see us, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world, and we'll set you up a time to come see us. Uh, we accept all patients with insurance, patient, all insurances, people without insurance, Medicare, car accidents, sports injuries. We want to be your doctor. 
we're going to make it as easy as possible to be your doctor. We want to work on your neck pain, back pain, misaligned, ver- misaligned bones, I should say. We want to work on your digestive system, your acid reflux, your heartburn, your burping, your gas, and we want to work on your diet. So if you want to order my supplements, if you want to make an appointment, listen to radio shows, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, um, or you can get those products on Amazon as well. Hey, thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show. We'll get you next time.